Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you had nothing to praise him for, you can praise him because he has set you free. Amen. How awesome is our God this morning. Go ahead and give him another hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If he hasn't healed you yet, he still set you free. Amen. What a great God we serve. You can be seated if you'd like. Man, we are excited to have you with us this morning. Uh, I checked the temperature. It was about 16 degrees this morning. And I said, well, we know we'll have some Facebook folks for sure. And so I welcome our Facebook family, our uh, online family. I welcome you guys and ladies, man, that braved the cold this morning. And none of you really look like it hurt you any, right? You survived it, and here we are, uh, a good, good hot 67 degrees in here. I got questioned about that. Pastor, did you turn the temperature down? I said, well, I may have. I just didn't know I did. Did you ever do that at home? I'm running this bad boy down. That meter is flying. There's eight of them in here, so I don't think I turned all eight of them down uh, out of habit for sure, but we're thankful you're here, and I feel warm this morning uh, just because you're here. So turn the heat off right now, and we're just going to be warm in the Spirit of the Lord, uh, excited to be in the, in the house of God. Uh, I, we talked about being a mirror image last week, and if you weren't here, and it's not a shot, but if you weren't here and didn't get one of these little things right here, I'm going to ask one of our folks at the door to run out there and get the basket. I want everybody to have a mirror in their hand at least before you leave. Uh, I think it's important that this is just a reminder. How many of you were reminded this week that I need to be the mirror image of God? I, I need to be, I have to be, if I'm going to be an influence for the kingdom of God, I need to be a mirror image of what God has created me for and created me to be. You see, I love that he's, if you, if you didn't get one of these last week or you didn't need one today, whatever that is, uh, if you just raise your hand, there's somebody going to come and give you that. We won't embarrass anybody, but uh, we just want you to have one in your hand. I know there's someone right here on the front row, but we're, we're excited you're here. Uh, I find myself just being thankful that God knew me right before I was conceived. I'm thankful that when he spoke in Jeremiah, he said before, right, I had a plan for you. All along, I had a plan for you, plan to give you hope and plan to give you a future. I love even that he said to prosper you, not to harm you. You see, I think we, be we believe sometimes because of the way we were raised, maybe the limitations we were raised in, the family that raised us had a mindset from the family that raised them or however that worked out, and we find ourselves always pitying ourselves. We find ourselves wondering why we're even here. Why did God create me? And I can tell you why he created you if you just need one reason. He created you to worship him. He created you to worship him in spirit and in truth. He created you to worship him in action and in deed. He created you, if that's okay, in the image of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. And I love that when he saw us in our mother's womb, he did not condemn us for the, for the sin that we would probably partake of later on in life. He didn't condemn you because of the actions of your mother or your father. He hasn't condemned you today because of the actions you, you took or you had or performed or done during your teenage years, during your reckless years. Maybe you're 50 and you're just now getting your life back in order. Then he hasn't condemned you for that. And so when you and I walk around with our head down and with a mindset of condemnation, we are not, listen, we are not beneficial to the kingdom of heaven. I believe that because there is joy in our hearts, because there's peace in our mind, because we've been delivered and set free, you and I, when we become the mirror image of God, we begin to extend grace. We begin to show love to the unlovable. We begin to reach the unreachable. We are willing to help the helpless and speak hope and even give hope to the hopeless. And so to be a mirror image of God is really not that big a stretch. It's not that huge of a challenge that I would have to ask you to do it. Uh, I would have to tell you to do it. I would have to double dog dare you to do it. It's not like I'm asking you to jump off the building. We're just saying, according to Scripture, God expects us when we have the mind of Christ, that mind that was in Christ Jesus, he says to let that be in us. And so today, I'm going to stay with mirror image. And I believe that when we grab these things, it's not the same scripture except for the first one. It's not the same scripture, but he created us in his image. Why not at 52 years old, almost 53 years old, why wouldn't I want to reflect that to the world? I love when people contact us and say, pray for my friend, pray for my enemy, 
pray for my ex, pray for my, pray for my, because listen, we may not get along and we may never get along. We may never have a relationship, but I don't want them to die lost. To us, that's the most beautiful call you can give us. That's the most beautiful thing. We had someone come to the altar and, and they came, this gentleman came to the altar and he told us what was going on in his relationship with his uh, wife or, or ex-wife or however you want to look at that at that moment. And he said, here's the thing, uh, I, would you pray with me? Because she's headed down a wrong path. Would you pray with me that God will not only change her, turn her and give her a revelation, but would you pray for me that he would treat her gently? I said, Wow. This is a gentleman that had been wronged by this lady, uh, had been, uh, I don't know what you would want to call it. I'm trying to be really, really nice. Uh, forsaken by this young lady, left by this young lady, and his concern was that God would treat her gently. How beautiful is that? I don't know if it means anything to you, but seeing his brokenness, man, he may have would have said, Pastor, I want you to pray that God would just, Right? But he didn't. He said, out of all of that, I want her to go to heaven one day. I want God to change her and do a work in her. Now, we're not getting back together. But I want God to treat her gently. Would you just pray that he'd treat her gently? And I just got to thinking about it. That's the love of God, man. That is the love of God. That's when the, someone has wronged you and you're still wanting and concerned for their life. You're still wanting them to spend eternity. And that's beautiful. Shared with someone this week that our mission here is one more, period, one more. No matter what they look like, act like, no matter the color of their skin, our mission at Life Changers is one more person hears the gospel. One more person comes to, the, comes to the saving knowledge of Jesus Christ. And that's where we should be, right? I hope that's every church in the world is their mission. But we don't always see that. What, what we see, unfortunately, is a church that will welcome sinners. We do, don't we? We welcome people that their life's not in order yet. We welcome people that smell like uh, the, the night before. We welcome people that have done things that the whole community's talking about, but we could really care less because we have a Jesus that can take care of that. And we do that, but what I find is that when someone in the church that's already in the church has an error in their life, we don't extend the same grace to them as we do the newcomer. We think there's a difference. We think when my Christian friend messes up, oh, I'm done, I'm done. But when our new friend comes in the door that has the same thing going on, we're just like this, aren't we? You see, that's the picture of the church. You and I, this should be our posture. No matter who it is and what level it is and where they're at with God, where they've been with God or where they've never been with God, I think that our posture as a church should always be that should always I'll, I don't care who it is don't care what color their skin is I don't care how much wrong they've done I don't care what they smell like I, I don't care what, what what they've chose to do to their bodies but our posture as a house of God as life changers will be this that we're always willing to, not, to we're not going to step on anybody but the mirror image of God is to pick them up and so I want us to be mindful of that. As I, as I give you some scripture this morning, I think we need to get to a place that grace is across the board. Across the board. I, I don't have to like them. They may be my ex. They may be my worst enemy. They may be whatever. They may be my best friend. But my grace to them, the grace that God extended to me, is the same grace I'm going to extend to them, whether I like them or whether I don't, really. And, and so someone asked me, said, Pastor, do you really like everybody? Do you like everybody? And I feel weird answering that question, really, because I don't like everybody. I love everybody, right? There's people that's wronged me, and I don't like what they've done, but I love them enough that I want to see them saved. I love them enough that I want them to see Jesus in me. I love them enough that I want them to see a hand extended when they're down. And they may hesitate taking my hand. They may not quite understand, would God really do this? Is Jesus really, would this, would this person really do this? And if you're a mirror image of God, then you just say yes. If you're a mirror image of Christ, then we just say yes. If you're uh, listening and walking in the word, we just say yes. And so again, let me thank you for being here this morning. I, I think that if we could get a picture of what we do when we come into the house of the Lord, we, we sharpen our acts together. 
You and I begin to sharpen the tools that God has given us uh, to minister with when Monday comes and when Tuesday comes and when Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday comes, that on Mon- um, Sunday, you and I have joined together. We have sharpened our tools of uh, ministry together. We have sharpened our acts together. And I promise you, we're going to get a whole lot done this coming week because we're in here sharpening our acts. And so Philippians 5 and 2, and it's just for reference, uh, Philippians 5 and 2, let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. That, that's where we need to get. The breakdown happens in your mind. The breakdown happens in your mind. Uh, people say, I had a nervous breakdown, but it happened in their mind. And and so we find ourselves dealing with that, maybe walking through that, and maybe you haven't lost your mind yet. Maybe you've had in the past a nervous breakdown, but you saw God restore you, then you can deal with this thing different than anybody else. But if you've never been restored, that's where we need to get first. You and I are here today uh, with an opportunity to look over our shoulder and say, is there anything, God, that I can do better? Anyone here that doesn't need to do better? Anyone here that's got it all together? Anyone here that has perfected their walk with God? Okay, you're in good company because apparently no one else has either. And so we look at this and with the opportunity to look over our shoulder, we sit here again today with the opportunity to evaluate our present. We sit here with an opportunity to hear the word of God, get a revelation from the word of God to decide how we're going to take our next step. What's my next move to be a mirror image of Christ? What's my next You may want to make a list this morning and say a few things I think I could work on. But if you make a list in your mind mentally or even put it on paper, if you make a list this morning, can I ask you not to look at that whole list? Can I ask you to pick the one thing that would change everything? You see, there's some things in our lives that we could change, absolutely, but there's always one thing that will change everything. That's what we need to focus on. The one thing that changed everything for me was to give my heart to Jesus and sell out and say, I'm in it to win it. And from that moment on, all I knew was that I wanted to please God. I I wanted to become a fully devoted follower of Christ so that hopefully and prayerfully I could lead some people to be fully devoted followers of Christ who will lead and begin to bring people into the fold and lead more people to become fully devoted followers of Christ. And so we sit here today with that moment and that opportunity and we may never get it again. We get calls this week of people who have stepped out into eternity. They won't get this chance today. Uh, We hear about people who have had uh, massive heart attacks at an early age and uh, have died of cancer at whatever age. And uh, we were just so shocked that only two months ago they were diagnosed and now they're gone. And we, we sort of talk about that, don't we, around town, around the house. And so I'm wondering if it ever hits you that, you know what, this coming Sunday may be my only time to be in the house of God and get my life turned around. And so we stand here today. I want to read with with you from Romans chapter five. It says, therefore, having been justified by faith and you and I, if we've received Christ as our savior, if we've asked him into our heart, if we've acknowledged him, confessed with our mouth, believed in our heart that he was raised on the third day, then you and I have been justified by faith. How beautiful is that? If you're not saved this morning, this is your chance to be justified by faith. This is your moment, even while I'm preaching, to say, Father, forgive me. I'm ready to start over. I want to be the mirror image of God. I want to be the mirror image that leads my family in righteousness. I want to be the mirror image that leads my family in holiness. I want to be the mirror image that makes a difference in the workplace and even at Walmart at the gas pump, makes a difference in the the line at at the fast food place, makes a difference in in the kingdom of heaven. I, I want to be that and do that. And if that seems overwhelming to you, then just do this first thing. I want to follow you. I want to follow you. And so being justified by faith, we have peace. Pastor Tammy mentioned peace already. And so we have peace. How do we have peace? When we acknowledge Jesus and he becomes our Lord, then we are justified by faith. We have peace. (laughs) Not you might have peace. Not not you, you could have peace. You have peace. It's a matter if you want it. You have peace. It's kind of like me having this water. If I stand here for 30 minutes and I'm thirsty the whole time, it's on me. It just is. Why? Because it's already been prepared for me. It's already been sit here within my reach. It's already been made available to me. So if I leave this stage in 20 minutes or so and I say, man, I am parched. I'm so thirsty. Someone should respectfully say, well, pastor, you had a quart of water up there. And so when we're thinking, I can't find peace, then 
respectfully, can I just say this? Go to Romans chapter 5 and verse number 1. Therefore, having been justified by faith, we have. Mm -hmm. And so knowing that you have peace and it's been made available, it's within your reach. Why wouldn't you have peace? You see, as refreshing as that was, imagine if I could picture that as peace. And I can have an understanding through the scripture that we have peace through God, uh, with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom also we have access by faith into this grace. How beautiful is grace. You and I really will never be able to fathom grace. Those errors in judgment, grace. Right? Those mistakes, uh, those downright failures, uh, I, I believe that when, when we begin to walk a, a, a walk with God and walk a walk with Christ, that we need to understand what grace looks like. No license to sin, but a license to have the power to resist sin. But when we do mess up, when we do accidentally, Scripture even says, do not be tangled again in that mess that had you tangled before when he saves you. Don't go running back. It's kind of funny, I had a guy pull me out. I was in Grayson County one time. I got stuck in Grayson County. Uh, I was so, I'll tell you how stuck I was. Uh, I had a pretty good lift kit on my truck, and when the front tire dropped off in that hole, my rear tire came completely off the ground about that far. That's stuck. You know what it is? Stuck. I couldn't get unstuck by myself. I had a mindset, though, that I was driving a Ford, and so I had a mindset of a couple things. You big dummy. That was my first mindset. My second mindset was I am not calling my friend with a Chevrolet to pull me out. <laughs> but I knew he was only a mile and a half down the road, and I made a decision right then. I will blow this thing up first. <laughs> okay, and then I came to my reality of the situation I was in. And y'all think all this is a parable, right? No, it's true. And so then I came to real senses, and I called my friend. And he came and pulled me out, and he never said a word, but he was grinning. He didn't say a word. Not a word. But as I got out, thanks, man, appreciate it, man. We moved on. He was pulling out or getting back in his truck. He stepped back out of the truck and said, hey, preacher. I said, yeah. He said, use that in your sermon. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I just ran right back in the ditch and called somebody else. I mean, but isn't that what we do? Isn't that what we do? We just go right back in the ditch? Are we not guilty of that? That God has delivered us from that addiction and we run right back to that addiction. Because we don't understand the power that we're walking in now. The authority that we have now. The grace that we have now. And I love this right here. That we, that, uh, we have access by faith, by faith, by faith. How do I get rid of that addiction? By faith. That's how. How do I like that person I really don't like? By faith. There's people, it's took me a little while. Wake up in the morning with them on my mind. And why were they on my mind? Because God knew I had a problem with them. You know what I do before I got out of bed? I love them. And there was, came a time that after a good while, I meant it. So by faith, the first 47 times. But then I began to mean it. Then I began to say, you know what? By faith, I love them today. By faith, I pray for them right now, God, that you're going to give them an outstanding. See, I'm, I'm just real with you if that's okay. I, I love everybody, but sometimes eek, I work on the liking part of it. And so into this grace in which we stand, what are we doing when we're understanding this grace by faith? Standing. We're standing, Right? This isn't a time to fall, fold up like a $2 suitcase. This isn't a time to fall apart like a, uh, like a Kmart lounge chair. A lounge chair. Th this is the moment that you and I have an understanding that my moment to stand is when I'm, I have access to, by faith to this grace. Quit falling apart. Stop it. That's not the image of God. 
It's not the uh, mirror image of the Word of God. The mirror image of the Word of God is that I'm standing. Why? Because I have access by faith and to this grace that I can stand, I can rejoice in hope of the glory of God. So not only am I standing, but while I'm standing, I'm rejoicing. What if the people around us in this community could see that? That's the most excited bunch I've ever seen up on that hill. One of these days, I'm going up there. I tell you what, I need a good dose of whatever they have. Don't you love to hear? Have you ever heard that? If you've heard that, how beautiful is that? If you, your ego didn't begin to be pumped. Your pride didn't begin to rise up. But when you heard someone say, I want some of what they have, you know what it makes me start doing? Evaluating myself. Like, holy moly, right? I don't know if that's a bad word. Holy moly, bad word. It's like, holy moly, if they want what I've got, they don't know where I've been to get what I've got. Holy moly. You start, it humbles, it should humble us. Let's, let's get. I love this next few portions of scripture chapter or verse number three it says not only that but we also but we also glory in tribulations if we ask the world what we do with tribulations what they will say we will find bitterness in tribulations we will accept chaos in tribulations we will begin to sulk find ourselves in despair have to deal with depression have to uh, fall subject to anxiety but in fact the word says that we will also glory in tribulations when all hell breaks loose we look to heaven for the cure for the remedy for the prescription we look to the word of God for the nudging to get us moving forward again we do not fall subject but because of tribulation to despair and depression and anxiety and chaos and isolation we do not turn our back on God just because things aren't going our way you're it's okay listen it might even be cute to some people when a kid at two and a half years old three years old throws a tantrum and wants to isolate themselves wants to stomp around wants to beat their chest wants to lay on the ground and kick but it's pretty blooming ugly when a full-grown man or woman of God begins to do that I will glory in tribulation I will glory in tribulation. How do I glory in tribulation? How do I glory? Because I have access by faith to this grace. Wow. The pastor don't have it all together. But there's times he wants to throw a tenter, temper tantrum, but instead he falls back in the word of God and says, I will glory in tribulations, knowing, look, 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 look. How do we do it? Because we know that tribulation produces perseverance. It's the only way you're going to get stronger is to have some resistance. As some of these young guys, some of these people that still lift weights, some of these people that still work out, it's that resistance, that resistance, that resistance that you went from using a three pound weight day one to using a 45 pound weight day whatever. We can grab that in the gym. Now, can you grab it in the house of God? And, and, and you were doing three pound 10 times three sets, and now you can do 45 just as long as you want to. Why? Because of perseverance. Because you made up your mind you didn't quit at the three pound, and now you were more than an overcomer with Christ because you persevered. How did you begin to experience perseverance? You went through some tribulation. I don't want them making fun of me. I don't want them making fun of me either, but now, just because they're saying it don't mean it's going to define me. Just because they're doing it, it does not define me. Tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Oh, so there we are. Now, because of tribulation, I'm beginning to build some character, and if my mission is to be the mirror image of God, then I have the character of God. Why? Because I didn't quit at tribulation. Because I walked through to perseverance. And because of that, I'm walking through now. I'm stepping into the character that God wants me to have. I have character now. Makes me walk different. Doesn't it? Well, you are a man of character. That don't mean anything to anybody else but me. You're a man of character. I may even pull him to the side and I say, hey, pal, what kind of character? Godly character? What are you saying? You're saying I'm a crook? I don't even... Let's not question that. You don't know what I've been through to get to where I'm at. You don't know what I've been through. The reason I can get through what I'm going through is because I went through what I went through. The reason I'm better now is because I, I had to work on being better then. The reason I can glory today is because God brought me through that mess and I know he'll bring me through this mess. And so we begin to have an understanding. My character's different and character now produces hope. Wow. 
So now we've gone from tribulation, we've gone from understanding grace by faith, and now we're, we, we walked through tribulation, there was perseverance, I'm not going to quit, I'm going to keep going, I don't care what it looks like, I'm going to make it home. We built character. And so no longer am I just some little kid Christian. Now I built some character that says, you know what, devil, you, whatever you bring to me, I'm not falling. I'm not giving up. I'm not going to be tempted by that. I'm no longer going to, I'm going to, I'm going to love my God more than I love the thing that tempts me. I'm going to love my God more than I love falling short of the things of glory and short of the things during tribulation. I'm going to walk it with perseverance. I'm going to see the character of God. They're going to see the character of God and it's going to produce hope. Now hope does not disappoint. Have you ever said, man, I just know God's disappointed in me. Okay, I'll help you with that. I've said that. I know God's disappointed in me. And believe it or not, I'm sort of that guy that I run back to particular scriptures that I have in my brain. And this is one of them I need. This is one I need personally. This is for me. And so for me this morning, I run right back to the word of God because why? Because I have hope in that. And hope does not disappoint because the love of God has poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. That tenacity you have, it's from him. Because in the wee hours of the morning, at the midnight hour, it's when Satan's going to say, won't you throw in the towel? Nobody cares about you. Everybody went to bed like it didn't even matter what you're going through. We have people come to us that have have lost a loved one, a close loved one specifically. And they'll say, it was so crazy. I caught myself driving down the road, sulking in myself, broken because of the loss. And there's nothing wrong with that, but this is where they went with the conversation. And it made me mad that it looked like everyone was going about their business and I just lost my mom. I'm riding down the street and everybody, they're mowing and they're out in the yard playing and they're uh, uh, laughing at the restaurant and they're going about their business and no one seemed, it seemed that no one cared about my heart being broken. Don't we, don't we do that? Don't we do that? But can I help you with this? Can I tell you something? I, I'm not saying you don't need people. We need people. I, I need people. I need you. I hope somewhere you need me. But I need, I need you and I need people. And so when we do that, we need people absolutely. But we need the word of God. We need to, that to be engrafted in our spirit that we have a full understanding of what this scripture looks like. That tribulation produces perseverance. Perseverance produces character. Character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint. How beautiful is that? And so that's how we stay on track. That's how we grab this word. We grab this word as Christians, as mere images of the word of God, as mere images of the power of God, as mere images of the grace of God, as mere images of Christ. We should look different to the world. You and I, we should look different to the world. Facebook, I think, could be the greatest thing ever invented in my personal opinion but I don't think it is I think it could be the greatest ministry tool that's ever 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 existed Hmm. but I'm not sure we all use it for that where do we show our character and where do we show our uh, our perseverance and how do we show our hope and how does hope with an understanding that hope does not disappoint why because the love of God has been poured out in our hearts by the Holy Spirit I love that the Holy Spirit was given to us freely, right? Just like Jesus was. That Jesus said, I'm going, but I'm going to send a comforter. No cover charge, right? Uh, It wasn't COD. Uh, He sent uh, the Holy Spirit to comfort us, to give us boldness, to encourage us, to lift us up. I want to tell you that we need the Word of God because John chapter 1, verse number 1 says that in the beginning was the Word and the Word was with God and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. So who all needs the Word of God? I need the Word of God. Every every day I find myself using a scripture for something, right? I find myself using a scripture for a situation or for one of your situations, trying to use a scripture to lift someone up or build someone up or even, believe it or not, build me up. 
lift me up because of that midnight hour that seemed like no one was there, but the midnight hour was still there. And so you grab the word of God and you believe the word of God and say, I need a word from God. And in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him and without him, nothing was made that was made. In him was life and the life was the light of men. How beautiful is that? You and I being born again, Christians, believers, you and I being fully devoted followers of Christ, you and I being newbies to the move of God, you and I being newbies to the house of God, you and I still become a light to the dark world. You and I still become that light. You and I begin to walk that, verse number five, and the light shines in darkness and the darkness did not comprehend it. I don't believe there should ever be a a, a time in your life that you believe for one minute that Satan has more power in your situation than God does. Not one minute, that moment of darkness has more power than the light of Christ does. And not, not for one second should you give that a thought. You cannot cater to him and give him an inch because he'll take a life. And so we grab that scripture, right? And I'm going to read you one more and I promise I'm closing. But in Colossians chapter 3, verse number 12, it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, how many of you are the elect of God? How many of you are the men and women of God? Those of you that may feel like, you know what, I'm not in right relationship with Christ. Can I help you? Uh, If you'll confess with your mouth and believe in your heart, you shall be saved. So as you right now sitting right there, just say, Father, forgive me of my sins. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. And so now I'm talking to everybody, right? And so you grab the scripture in Colossians chapter 3, and it says, Therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, put on tender mercies. I think sometimes we get a little bit whatever, you know, a little churchy, and I hate churchy, don't you? I, I, I love real. I love somebody just be real. I say, Pastor, I know I'm saved, but, man, I've had one of those days. I, I, I know I'm healed, but, man, my leg still hurts. I just need you to believe with me and pray with me and agree with me that I am healed. I'm believing I'm healed, though I don't feel healed. I, I, I'm believing peace is on the way, though I don't feel any peace. I, I, I'm believing that chaos is getting ready to leave, though the storm seems to be raging. You see, I, I believe there comes a moment that we put on something different and we put on the mercies, the tender mercies of God. We put on that mirror image kindness of the Lord. We put on that humility and, and, and that meekness. We put on long suffering and uh, bearing with one another and forgiving one another. And I, I love this next part. If anyone has a complaint against another, even as Christ forgave you, so you also forgive them. And so here we are. What's the mirror image of God look like? Forgiveness. That grace we talked about last week and we'll talk about again next week. That grace that we extend and that you and I have now chiseled off. We've allowed him to chisel off the rough edges and to begin to work on us. For those of us that carried such a fleshly character and such a fleshly prideful walk, we've allowed him already. And if you haven't already, you can. We've allowed him to circumcise us spiritually. That he cut off the excess flesh that was of no benefit to the kingdom of heaven. And if you've never done that, it seems a little weird, right, guys? But it seems a little weird to say, and, but God, circumcise me today. God, speak to my mind and to my heart. God, that those, that extra flesh that I'm carrying that does no good for the kingdom of heaven, God, would you just circumcise me? Would you take away my desire for this and my desire for that? And God, I I just need you to magnify my desire for the things of you. And I need you, Lord, to teach me how to forgive when I still have a broken heart. Lord, teach me how to forgive even when I'm dealing with some thoughts that I may not should be having about them. God, teach me how to put on tender mercy. Teach me how to deal in kindness and humility. God, teach me how to walk meek and how to have long suffering bearing one another's burdens. You see, I'll give you a quick hint of what that looks like for me. Is when someone for the past eight or ten years comes to me with the same prayer request. I'm just being honest, okay? Not that you can't come to me with that prayer request, don't misunderstand me, but if you've sat under this ministry for eight or ten years, if you've sat under the Word of God anywhere for eight or ten years, I have, 
I have to run right here and I say long suffering, long suffering, long suffering. Because what I want to say is you should have been past this seven years ago. You should have been over this a long time ago. You've received enough word in you to float a boat and yet you're still on a raging sea. That, that's what I, I mean, I'm honest, right? Maybe you're that way. Do we still have to talk about this? But you know what the scripture says, said long suffering, bearing with one another. And so in the quietness of my time, that's where I deal with that. And when they bring that eight-year-old prayer request, because here's the thing, I know God had fixed it 10 or 12 times, but they kept digging it back up. And so I work on me in there so that I can come out here and help work on them. And so when we look at that, it says forbearing or bearing with one another and forgiving one another. If anyone has complained against another, even as Christ forgave you, also do the same. But above all, look, well, here's the mirror image, man. But above all, these things put on love. Love, what is that? Which is the bond of perfection. And let the peace of God rule in your heart. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. To which also you were called in one body. And here's the last part. I love this. And be thankful. You see, that's the mirror image of God. When you grab these scriptures, that's the mirror image of God. And so let's not only talk about what God called us to be. Let's be it. But let's not just talk about who God called us to be. Let's be who God called us to be. I, I, I love when someone says, God's still working on me, but let's remove the butt. You know, to, let, let's just kick the butt out of here. You know, to, and just say, God's working on me. I'm thankful God's working on me. I'm going to let God work on me. I'm going to submit to the word of God and to the Holy Spirit and let him work on me circumcise me put me in the tumbler and knock the edges off of this old rock smooth me out for the glory of God I want to be that if you'll stand to your feet for me just a second you've already had opportunity to give your heart to the Lord and I don't want to wear that out but we won't close without it maybe this morning you just be bold enough to say pastor I, I need Jesus I need Jesus and if you'd slip your hand up I don't know who to pray for this week and I just need Jesus and maybe you'd be even bold enough to say, I need Jesus, and I know I need Jesus, but I'm not quite ready. Could you pray for me? That, that's tougher. It's tougher. But it, it's just real. It's okay to be real here. We do real here. And so maybe you're here and you say, you know what? I'm going to give my heart to the Lord right now. And when you confess with your mouth, listen to me. He sees that repentant heart, that moment, that moment you breathe that word. Heavenly Father, forgive me. Wow. Wow, he cast your sin as far as the east is from the west, never to be remembered again. He cast your shame. He cast your regret. He cast all of that guilt as far as the east is from the west. And you and I stand here, a mirror image of Christ, a mirror image of Christ. Let me pray for you this morning. If you would, I would just want to just encourage you to be in the house of the Lord when you can. Wednesday night Facebook Lives, man, 7 o'clock. It's in those moments that we sharpen our acts, our giftings together. And in those other times, those other five days a week, I know the Word of God will sharpen you as you continue to read it. Let's pray. God, we just love you today. Lord, we just give you glory and honor. We give you praise in this house, Heavenly Father. God, for every person that's here, every person that's on Facebook, every person watching online, God, we praise you for their attentiveness. We praise you, God, just for their faithfulness. And Lord, may this word go with them, change them, mold them, deliver them, set them free, that they will not only be fully devoted followers of Christ, but they will be those people that bring in others to become fully devoted followers of Christ. Lord, use us and your mirror image from this day forward. In Jesus' name, amen. Can somebody give him a hand clap of praise this morning? Thank you guys for being here. Oh, don't forget, Thursday night, we're back to Women of Worship and Men of Valor. The men will meet in the teen center next door, 7 p.m. Thursday night. The ladies will meet here in the sanctuary. We're just excited to get back together again, and I hope you'll be with us. If you're a visitor, a guest, please go to our guest services in the back corner. Someone's going to meet you back there, get you signed up, get you a gift. 
for being here today. If you have kids, be sure to grab those before you leave. And if you don't, you're welcome to use either exit to the side. Thank you very much. God bless you guys. If you want to get connected, come to Women of Worship or Men of Valor. It's a great way to meet friends. God bless.